All right. I know you're late in the uh, PowerPoint presentation and you're thinking to yourself, wow, it doesn't get any more exciting than this. Uh, but let's hang in there. We have a couple of topics to go. This one here is asking us to do a couple of things. It's asking us to graph this line that has the equation y equals 1 third x plus 2. And then a separate question, part b, uh, to graph a different line, we know the slope and the point. We don't know the equation, but we do know the slope and we do know the point. So let's look at part A first, okay? Part A, it tells us straight away, this is the slope, okay? Y equals mx plus b, m is the slope. We also know that slope is rise over run. So we know that the rise must be one, and the run must be three. The rise is one, and the run is three. Maybe no equal sign, maybe we'll just point. Rise is one, run is three, okay? We also know, uh, let's change color here. We also know that this here is the y-intercept. It's where it crosses the y-axis, and that's all we need to do. Y-intercept, so it crosses the y-axis at two, okay? Which is right about there. That's where it crosses the y-axis. Okay. We know that the rise is 1 and the run is 3. So literally, and it's a much easier on graph paper of course, but literally we are going to go up 1 and over 3. Okay. Up 1 and over 3. Okay. And then we're going to repeat that process. Up 1 and over 3. So again we're going to go up 1 and over 3. Okay, we'll be about right there. Okay? Now, why we want to do it twice is we want to generate three points. Right? And why we want to generate three points is if those three points create a line, we likely have not made a mistake. Right? If we only did two points and made a mistake, we'd never know it, because any two points you can just draw a line through it. But if the three points line up, then likely we have not made a mistake. Okay? And in this case, here we go. Those three points line up, right? Well, we put arrows, a line extends. But those three points line up. So what we've done is we've graphed the line. All we needed to do was put the y-intercept and literally count. Rise of one, go up one, run of one, two, three, and we're there. Rise of one, run of one, two, three, and we're there. And that's how we get that one, okay? So that's for part A. Let's leave it up, we'll go to part B. We'll try our blue, hopefully our blue works this time. Okay. Part B is different, it does not give you the equation, but it does give you the slope, so we still know the slope. Okay. Now, in this case, a slope of negative two, well, I said slope is equal to rise over run, okay? But it just says slope is negative 2, negative 2. But remember, we can always make an integer into a fraction, and slope is a fraction. If we don't have a fraction, we can put it over 1. That makes it a fraction. So the rise is negative 2 over the run of 1. So that's the one thing we needed to do. Once we've done that, the point is 1, 4. So we literally just plot it. 1, 4. It's about right there, 1, 4. Okay? So this is 1, 4. Now we know the rise is negative 2. That means we're not actually rising because it's negative. We're actually going down. Negative 2 and 1. Okay? So we go down 2 and then over to the right because it's 1. So we're going to go down 2 okay, from uh, 4 to 3 to 2. And we're going to go over 1. And we're going to be, oh, I don't know, right about here. And then we're going to go down 2 again and over 1 again. So we're going to go down 2 more, 1, 2. And we're going to go over 1. And we're going to be somewhere around there. Okay. And what I've done is I've got three points. Let's hope they line up. Because if they didn't, I made a mistake. Ah, they do. Whew. Okay. 
They line up nicely. So what I've done, and now we put arrows on it. Okay. What I've done is I have created a graph based on the fact that I knew the point that we could start at, which was 1, 4, and I knew the slope. It allowed me to draw the graph. Okay. Now, I'm using red and blue, kind of separating them, but if you ever have an equation like this, the ideal thing is to label it. Okay, so we know which one that is, especially if you're not using multiple colors, to label it so we know which one that is. This one we don't have an equation, but we know that it is the other one. Uh, so what you could do at least is we know it's question B, so we could at least state that it's question B, so we know which graph is supposed to be which. Okay, we'll see you at the next slide.